What's up, YouTube? Pink Reaper here with a um, a video I promised to make a couple couple days back, maybe a week or so ago, um, talking about the talking about Gen Six and the the changes to the metagame, going really in depth. What my opinions on are on it, what I think of the OU metagame, stuff like that. Um, what I'm predicting for the future, everything sort of like that. Uh, this is going to be much more in depth than the last video I did about it, where it was just sort of me doing a quick run, not quick rundown, but sort of like a nitty gritty kind of thing. Um, just just real quick, the uh, the video we see here in the back is just something, it's a replay I grabbed the other day um, just to have something to play in the background. Uh, I got a couple of these, really, um, while I talk about these things. Uh, there's not nothing really special about it other than the fact that uh, apparently the person I'm, I'm battling here, I, when I was doing this, doing this battle, when I got this replay, I wasn't doing it for recording. I was just testing out my team. I was just, you know, playing it in ladder and whatever. But I happen to run into someone who I think is either one of my subscribers or someone who knows who, who I am because some during during part of this uh, this battle he asked me if I was recording so I thought it's probably your um, probably one of my subscribers so that's that's actually really cool and I, I'm like well I, I'm not recording but I can at least throw up the replay and show you show how it went um, I won't won't be commentating this battle or anything like that I'm not gonna be talking about anything that's going on in it it's just there to be in the background so something's going on while you're listening to me talk. Um, I might eventually do a rundown of this battle and talk about my thought processes and things like that while I was playing, but for the time being, that's not what not that's not what's going to happen. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Um, now, first things first. Uh, let's talk about uh, the the new the new Pokemon and the new Pokemon I think are going to be OU, um, or rather I should say. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, that I think will be OU. The reason I say that is because as of right now, there is no actual OU tier list. There's no tiering for any of the new Pokemon. There's actually no tiering whatsoever for even the old Pokemon. Um, with the exception of a couple of things that are now counted as Uber. Um, because of that... Um, because of that, there's currently none... There's no no Pokemon that are, you know, OU, and there's no Pokemon that are technically guaranteed to be OU, but then they're kind of are, just because of how the tiering works and uh, usage, usage statistics and such. Um, and let's let's start off with the uh, the really big obvious ones, the the big three, uh, Aegislash, Talonflame, and Greninja. These three Pokemon are guaranteed. I don't even need to say basically guaranteed. I don't even need to say probably guaranteed. I mean... 100% unquestionably, these three Pokemon are going to be OU when the tier list comes out. Um, the The current usage statistics on the three of them, I think all three of them are above 30% usage already, which is insane. Um, that's getting into like DPP Scissor um, or Black White um, Politoed usage statistics right there. It's absurd. Um, and for good reason, all three of them are really, really, really good. Uh, the best of the three, in my opinion, is actually Greninja. Some people might think it's not Greninja. Some people might think it's um, Aegislash. That's fine. But in my opinion, Greninja is just absurdly, obscenely powerful, especially compared to uh, pretty much everything else, really. Protean is an insane ability. Giving it stab on all of its moves is ridiculous. Um, you're basically looking at a Pokemon that just gets plus 50% power every turn, like on every attack. Uh, you've got a choice specs Pokemon that can also use Life Orb. Um, turning its rather like modest, like what is it, 114 special attack. It's something weird like that. It's not very high um, special attack into something absurd. Uh... It's insanely difficult to switch into unless you're going to a dedicated special wall. Um, it learns some really, really useful support moves. It learns taunt. It learns um, spikes. It does not learn rapid spin. Um, I feel that's very important to say because a lot of a lot of people early on thought it learned rapid spin. It does not, but it does learn spikes, and that's insane. Um, it's a really, really strong, really powerful. Pokemon. The only thing that keeps it probably from being completely overpowered is its absurdly terrible defenses, and the fact that it basically can't really take a resisted hit. Like, um, because it's constantly changing its own type, it has a hard time, you know, being the type it wants to be if it's going to try and resist an attack. Um, 
And even then, its defenses are so bad that stuff like Choice Band Scissor or Choice Band Azumarill can still pretty much two-hit KO it with priority anyway. Um, but it should always 100% be considered when you're making a team. That Pokemon is just... I cannot overstate this how strong that Pokemon is and how dangerous it is. Um, next up in terms of the three, uh, I'd say is probably Aegislash. And, and I actually... I'd, you know, it is. If it's not number one, it's number two. That's what Aegislash is. Um, it's exactly as good as everyone thinks it is. Let's just put it like that. Um, it basically has 150 attacking stats and 150 cent, uh, 50 defense stats at the same time. Um, you can say, no, it switches from one to other, but that's not true because it gets to choose when it uh, when it attacks and when it doesn't and when it's not it's you know setting up it's whatever and then it has 150 defense stats and when it's doing that it doesn't care what its attack stat is um, and then obviously once it starts attacking suddenly it's at 150 attack stats um, the thing that makes Age of Slash so dangerous is King Shield um, it's not the priority Shadow Sneak it's not the fact that it can go mixed it is King's Shield if you're using an Age of Slash that doesn't have King Shield, you're using a bad Age of Slash. I'm sorry, it's true. Um, King Shield is simultaneously a mind game and just an instant, like... It, how should I put it? It's... It instantly stops you from being countered. Let's just put it like that. Um, a lot of the things that could, you know, switch in on Age of Slash and counter it can't really one hit KO it when it's at 150 base defense and because even if you come in on its attack form it can instantly switch to defense while taking no damage that's the important thing um uh, Aegis Lash is just way too dangerous in that state in that sentiment there we go uh I have trouble with words sometimes I'm sorry um it is definitely not the absolute most powerful Pokemon um uh, it has trouble with a couple things but not much um and it definitely obviously it's very very slow uh it can't take repeated hits and stuff like that and its item choice is also very very important for it because obviously life orb age of slash um without that recovery it's kind of going to die if it just takes one you know strong strong uh, super effective hit even if it does if, even if it is in that defense form because again it's not going to heal any of that damage and it's going to you know damage itself with life orb um, lefty's lefty's version is going to unfortunately not have as much you know uh, it's just not going to have as much power as um, as it might want um, and then stuff like uh, weakness policy or choice you know whatever there's there's weaknesses to all of them there's there's certain things that counter each specific set. There's certain th certain things that can deal with each specific set better, but um, there's there's that. It also can't really deal with burn, even if it's running a mixed set. Um, Will-O-Wisp does... Uh, this is important. King Shield does not like protect. It does not protect against status moves like that, so um, if you King Shield against something that has Will-O-Wisp, you can still totally get Will-O-Wisp. That's really important. Um... And that's going to be one of the better ways to, to deal with it. Obviously, it still can use special moves if it's mixed, but I don't really feel mixed. Um, the mixed set is that great because you basically either have to run, a, a, you know, you either have to run King's Shield, which puts you in uh, three move, you know, four move slot syndrome territory right there because now you're stuck with three moves and one of them has to be Shadow Ball and one of them has to be Shadow Sneak. Or you can not run Shadow Sneak and just lose to faster things. Again, it's, you know, it's whatever. Um, or you have to not run King Shield, which basically just destroys your Pokemon. Um, but yeah, definitely a ridiculously strong Pokemon. Definitely deserves the usage it gets. It's really, really powerful. Um, Talonflame, <laughs> it just died, is the, uh, is the next one. It's not as good, I feel, as a lot of people feel it is. It's kind of running a hype train right now, um, and that hype train's gonna run out of steam eventually. Um, it will remain OU. It's very good in OU. Don't don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of people who feel like it's, you know, one of the best Pokemon, um, just outright. It's not. It's the top three of Gen 6, but it is not the top three of Pokemon, period. Um, however, I cannot understate how powerful its ability is. Priority, 
Priority on all flying moves is really, really strong. It lets it counter some things that are very, very difficult to counter. Set up sweepers specifically. Dragon dancers like Gyarados. Um, Dragonite if multiscale is gone. Um, agility sweepers, although the most common one being Thundorus is going to be hard. It's going to take a... a or Thundorus I, I'm sorry. Uh, it's going to take a Brave Bird pretty well anyway, but, you know. Um, oh, look, the video just ran out. Well, that's okay, because um, I have more. Give me one second. Right, we're back. Um, but, like I said, Agility Sweepers aren't super, super common, but, you know, it's a thing that exists. It can, um, it can deal with stuff like uh, Shell Smashers, things like that. Uh, it's very, very important. And its dual stabs are actually very good with each other. Um, but, and this is the big thing, the reason I don't feel that um, that Talonflame, you know, is best Pokemon Gen 6 OMG, uh, is because its move pool is pretty limited. It's stuck basically to double stabs. Um, and because of that, there's certain Pokemon it just absolutely can't deal with. Um, without Steel Wing, it can't even deal real damage to Tyranitar, which reveals, which resists both of its stabs. It can't, even with Steel Wing, it can't do anything to Rotom Wash in pre-bank. And it, in post-bank, there's, you know, a couple extra Pokemon, uh, specifically uh, Heatran, which really it can do nothing to. Like, Heatran, you're gonna, it's immune to one of your attacking types, resists the other. Um, Heatran doesn't have, you know, the best way to deal with, with, Talonflame, especially if Talonflame has um, has Roost, but it can set up on it, it can set up Stealth Rocks, it can set up Subs, it can Sub Toxic it, or it can, if I was running Ancient Power for a while and I just, you know, straight up one hit KO'd it, whatever, don't even care, don't even care, um, but again, this is, this is sort of a, a big problem for, uh, um, for Talonflame, now again, I still think it's a really, really good Pokemon, um, and it's very, very, very usable, especially if you want to, you know, you want to have a check for a lot of um, fast threats and stuff like that. Choice Scarfers, um, Setup Sweepers, and it has a lot of natural speed on its own, so it can run something like Max Attack, Max HP, and try and make it go a little bit bulkier. But again, uh, Stealth Rocks is kind of a, a problem for it. It's going to tear off a huge amount of its HP, 50% every time it switches in. Um... Which is why I feel like Choice Band, um, Choice Band, I keep forgetting its name, Talonflame. Choice Band Talonflame isn't the best just because you kind of really want to have access to Roost. But, you know, for for what you need it for. Um, the big thing is people keep trying to use it as a sweeper. I don't think stuff like uh, um, Swords Dance, I don't feel like Swords Dance, uh, what's its face? Again, I keep forgetting its name. Swords Dance Talonflame. I even have it, like, I have it written down right here. I'm so stupid. Uh, Swords Dance Talonflame, I don't feel is um, as good as people want it to be because, again, there's certain Pokemon that just can't get through even at plus two and losing half your health when you switch into, uh, when you switch into Stealth Rocks, you're better off running something like Life Orb, Life Orb Roost and just using it um, as the really good check it is. Um, now there's two other Pokemon I feel from Gen 6 are just absolutely going 100% to be, um, OU. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I moved my mouse a little there and it popped up the clock. Um, I'm going to put these two Pokemon together because they're very, very similar, but I feel they'll still both end up being OU because one's not that much better than the other in any way, shape, or form that they can't both be OU. And that is Trevenant and Gorgeist. These are two very, very important Pokemon that were added in Gen 6, I feel. Um, they do... I almost feel like they were specifically added to counter some really specific overpowered Pokemon, and for that, I love them. Um, they're most commonly run um, as, like, specially defensive for Trevenant, physically defensive for Gorgeist, but they can both be run special or physically defensive. They both have basically the same moveset. There's a, there's a couple things that set them apart, um in terms of moveset, but the big thing is their abilities. Um, stuff like uh, uh, Harvest and Natural Cure on Trevenant um, make it very good as a status absorber. Um, 
there's natural, obviously there's natural rest or just straight up natural cure, or there's lum rest with harvest. Um, Trevenant can, Trevenant can uh, use a salt vest really well because it does have the ability to heal itself some, somewhat well on its own using a uh, um, horn leech. It's its only it's its only way to heal with assault vest, but it's usable, um, and it has access to a lot of good support. They both have access to really good support moves like Will O' Wisp, Leech Seed, stuff like that. Um, Gorgeist, while lacking in very good uh, very good abilities, has access to, and it's I, I'm reasonably certain it's the only Grass type Pokemon that has this. It has access to Fire Blast. Um, that lets it get through. Lets it get through um, stuff like Ferrothorn, which would basically just wall it to all get out if it's trying to use a subseed set or something like that. Um, as well as other grass types, if it's trying to use um, a, a leech seed set. This is why you, why I feel like Gorg Gorgeist, Gorgeist is the better seeder of the two. A lot of people try and use um, subseed Trevenant. I just feel like Gorgeist is better, just because of that. That's the only reason. Um, but, like I said, they're both very good Pokemon. They both counter a lot of Pokemon that are, that were kind of, like, I feel overpowered in the er earlier generations. There is no way for Keldeo to get past Gorgeist or Trevenant, especially defensive ones. Basically ruin um, Keldeo. And same goes for stuff like um, Scarf Terrakion. Uh, it's just, it's not going to get past these two Pokemon. It just can't. Um, now, Unscarfed Terrakion might have some semblance of getting away with it. Maybe if it's using, like, um, Swords Dance Stone Edge might... But even then, it's it's kind of unlikely. Um, just some of these powerful fighting types that sort of just got even better in Gen 5. Uh, Breloom. Breloom can't do anything to a uh, Gorgeist or Trevenant. Again, it... It's immune to one of its attacks, resists the other attack, it's immune to Spore, it's just a really, really, they're just both really good Pokemon, and they're very good utility Pokemon, they should always be considered when building a defensive core. Um, those are the Pokemon I feel are absolutely guaranteed to be OU. Um, getting into the opinion Pokemon, you might think, well, there, there's other Pokemon that I, I feel are guaranteed to be OU, and I kind of feel that way too, but I'm just gonna, you know, err on the side of caution, I have them in my opinion list. Um, first off is Gudra. I'm just going to run over these Pokemon pretty quick. I'm not going to go in, in as in-depth with the uh, the definite Pokemon. Gudra is the pseudo-legendary introduced in this generation. It's a weird pseudo-legendary because unlike the rest of them, it, uh, it doesn't focus on attacking stats. It focuses on defense. Uh, it does have good attacking stats. It has 100 attack and 110 special attack. That's not terrible. It also has access to a lot of really, really good special attacks. Like, it has every type that exists with the exception of I think like fairy in terms of special attack it learns thunder and thunderbolt ice beam and blizzard flamethrower and fire blast muddy water um it just it has so many attacks it's such such a usable pokemon and it has a lot of things it can do it can be offensive it can be defensive it can run assault vest it can not run assault vest um it has some useful abilities too I don't think gooey's that great I feel like um uh it's sort of a a niche kind of thing. It's just, it's not nearly as usable as Sap Sipper, which gives you a straight up immunity. Um, it doesn't have the greatest physical defense on 80 to physical defense, but it has absurd 150 special defense. Um, you'll definitely see a lot of that Pokemon on defensive teams. Sylveon is next. Um, Sylveon is what I feel like should be, what I feel like is like the good, um, the good, how for this? It's the good specially, def specially defensive um, fairy without being that much better. Like, um, I'm gonna get into Florgas a little later. Sylveon can set up really well. It has usable stats for that, and it's bulky. It has access to Wish. It has access to um, some usable coverage moves and stuff like that. I feel like it's a pretty good Pokemon like that. Um, Again, I'm, I don't want to get too much into it. We, we haven't really discovered the full potential of Sylveon. It's a very new Pokemon. But of the um, of the newer fairy-type Pokemon, it's definitely one of the more usable ones. That's It's definitely more support-oriented. Um, but it does what it does well. Um, up next is Florgas. Like I said, I was going to say it. Florgas, I was almost 
basically going to put with Sylveon. It's another really specially defensive Pokemon, and it uses that stat extremely well. Uh, again, it wish passes. Um, it's not much of an attacker. It can't really set up as well as um, as Sylveon can, but it you know it can set up. Um, I think it can. I think it gets Calm Mind. Maybe it doesn't. I'm not sure. But either way, if you're just looking for a very good support, especially defensive support Pokemon, um, Florges, really, really good. Um, speaking of support, there then there's Klefki. Klefki is absurd. <laughs> like, I, I, I can't say this enough. Um, it's a really absurd Pokemon. Um, Klefki, it's, it doesn't seem that good, but Prankster, with all of the moves it learns, is insane. It gets Recover, it gets Double Screens, it gets Spikes, it gets T-Wave, Toxic, um, Substitute. It gets just so many moves uh, that it can use to take advantage of. It doesn't get Taunt, at least. Jesus, if it got Taunt. Um, and obviously it gets uh, it gets Play Rough, as it's only a real uh, usable attacking move. I don't think it gets Foul Play. It might. If it gets Foul Play, oh my god, that Pokemon, seriously. Um... But yeah, it's not hugely bulky. People might think, oh, well, even with all of this, I can still just, you know, come and hit it with a really strong attack and then it'll die. No. Okay. First off, its typing gives it very few weaknesses. It's weak to ground and fire, and I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. It's basically the new psychic steel. Um, it It's either immune or resist, or immune resist or neutral to everything else. Um, and the fact that it can throw up a screen with priority means... You know, even if you come in there with, you know, unstabbed flamethrower, it's like, oh, what a, or, or unstabbed flamethrower or a really strong stab attack. It's like, oh, whatever, I can just throw up this. Take less fi less than 50% damage and just start, you know, healing or whatever, whenever I need to. Um, it's a really annoying Pokemon. And the fact that it gets spikes and stuff like that, just, oh my god, that Pokemon. Um, next up is uh, Noivern. Uh, Noivern is not the most powerful Pokemon, but it... It learns some very strong moves. It gets, you know, Hurricane, Boom Burst, Draco Meteor. Uh, and it has, you know, a very usable speed stat. It's, I think, 123 base speed. It's really, really good. Um, you'll see a lot of either Scarfed or Spexed um, Noivern running, like, U-Turn plus three attacks. It's very, very, very good. Don't let its low special attack... Um, don't let its low special attack fool you. It can scout very well with U-Turn, and it's, you know, it's got a lot of high base power attacks to take advantage of. And it can run, uh, scar it can run choice specs very well with that high speed stat. Um, it also learns a lot of other really useful attacks, you know, flamethrower, stuff like that. Um, things that it can, it can take advantage of well. And it has Infiltrator, um, which allows it to get through substitutes and things like that. It's not hugely useful, but it's, you know, it's useful. Last but not least is Zygarde, or Zygarde, however you want to pronounce that. Um, sorry, I, I don't want to start one one last uh, replay since this video is going to end kind of soon. Um, Zygarde is, in a lot of people's opinions, it won't be OU. It'll just be, you know, UU. I don't feel that. I feel like it's too strong. Yes, it's not as bulky as Dragonite. Yes, it's not as strong as Garchomp, but it... It still has its niche. Its typing means it resists stealth rocks, uh, and it doesn't rely on multi-scale to be bulky like Dragonite does. Um, it also has access to priority, which is something that um, Garchomp doesn't have. It's kind of a mix of those two Pokemon. Uh, it doesn't have Dragon Dance to set up. Coil, a lot of people think it's sort of a... Um, uh, it's sort of a... Uh, what's the word? A gimmick set? I don't feel like it is. It has really good defenses, and those defenses going even higher basically means you'll never KO it on the special defense or on the uh, defensive side. Even at just plus one defense, you're basically not like you're not going to ice shard that anymore. It doesn't happen, um, and it's got such good usable special defense that you also just can't throw an HP ice at it and expect it to die. It's not going to happen. Uh, Ground Dragon is ridiculously good for attacking type. Uh, and access to extreme speed, again, really, really good. There's still definitely some Pokemon it, it just can't deal with. That's always going to be true. But I feel like it's too good for underused, so it's going to end up in OU. Um, that's really it, though, for the new Pokemon. It's just those, like, what is it, 10? Um, hold on, let me count here. 11. Okay. I forgot I kept counted Trevenant and Gorgeist as one, even though they're two different Pokemon. Um... That's, 
Uh, I'm going to be doing Mega Pokemon separately, what I think of those. They're going to have their own video. Um, that's really it, though, for the new Tyrion video. Um, I was going to do everything all in one video, but it was going to end up like an hour and a half if I did it that way. So, I'm going to keep this as its own video. It's going to just be this one part. Be on the lookout for the next one. I'm going to be going over the metagame. Like, how the metagame has changed, what it's centered around. Um, big shakeups that came in Gen 6, stuff like that. Um, but that's going to be its own separate video. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. This has been Pink Reaper, signing out.